Greetings and welcome back everyone to From the Depths and to the Wanda being rapidly reconstructed. We are actually mining a good bit of metal at the moment. We still need quite a lot, I imagine, if we have a look up here. The Wanda's only at 80%. That's far enough away that we really are going to need quite a lot of uh, time to get everything back. So what I'm going to do is I'm currently going to just take the Wanda out of play. Now the reason I've done that is there's one thing I want to build on this station before we get to anything else. And regarding our new sub, our command sub, don't worry, I haven't forgot. We haven't named it, and I'm not going to name it until I actually spawn one into the campaign. Then I'll let you know what the class name of the sub is going to be. I have already decided. Um, there were some stonkingly good choices, honestly. About four or five that really were hard for me to choose between. I mean, I really had to deliberate over them, and it more or less came down to just how much effort the uh, post that had put into informing me of the mythology behind the uh the the name but uh, we are going to add just a few things to this first and foremost oh respawning beacon no repair mm. bot can i can i not uh displaying day one blocks to get no no i want them all displaying simple blocks no no i want them all mm. give me all of the blocks thank you there there we are right repair bots we want a few just to keep this place uh, in tip-top condition. There we go. They should be enough to get everything sorted. Right, there we are. That's all I wanted to do. The uh, place here has 93% repair. Why is it only 93? What is broken then? Now, there are many, 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 many changes that have come in. And we are going to explore them over time but uh for the the time being we're not going to do like a, a big old uh, patch update just yet we have got a fleet of one item uh piranha coming in uh, very well uh, i'm not sure what would be the best thing to take that out but whilst we're building up some metal let's go ahead and warp up to the kuroro and then in fact spawn it in there we go are we in the seat? Yes, fantastic. Now, I wanted to check, does the Kuroro have two mine laying systems? Yes, it does. Oh, that's actually quite fantastic. I'm pretty happy with that, actually. Now, where are they going to be? They're going to be somewhere off in that direction, heading to us rather swiftly, I suspect. So, we're going to have the Kuroro move to around here, I think. Can we get you to move over here? No? no? Not really in the mood? There we go, that's what we wanted. About there. Now, one of the things I'm considering doing is actually building some shoreguns, but honestly, I would rather take this enormous mountain over here and actually have some, uh, some coastal guns on that and make this our main base. This is just a small resource zone. I wouldn't mind taking this because that would be a fantastic place for a dock. I think a, a large dock city. We've got a resource zone just out there. We could like build out and have some mining going on. But mostly just have the, uh, a city built into this mountain with massive coastal guns. Just huge, rapid fire, crazy damage sniper weapons. That's my plan for the time being. But uh, as we're slowly building up metal, now it's going to take several thousand metal, unfortunately, for us to put together our command sub. We then need to decide on the weapon loadout for the sub. There are lots of little things that I think we can work on. In fact, I'm thinking of changing the base design just slightly. And that's why I want to wait on spawning one in before I actually name anything. But uh, we're going to pull everything out to play. Speed up time a little bit. In fact, we're going to get you down here as well. So that you can all take part in this fight for us. There we are. And blockaded. Is everyone in this fight now? I think they are indeed. Fantastic. All right, then. Now, if we come out of here, we should be able to spy the enemy just over yonder. right yo. it's time for us to load some things. So first, we're going to be bringing in the HMS Kuroro. Go. And then the Sobek and the Eric Martin. Let's see how this enemy fares. Hopefully, none too well. 
It's only a small one. It's actually got a relatively large amount of metal on it. Ooh, I like this. We might be about to get ourselves a little bit of uh, money here. Or rather, resources. Not really money, I suppose. Ooh, it's shooting at the... I'm not sure. I think that might be the Eric Martin. But we've got plenty of missiles coming in and doing enormous amounts of damage to it, too. Oh, wow, you've got a good shot on the Kororo there. You've done a fair chunk of damage to it. Taking out some of the support structures. Oh, my lord, the Kororo's going down hard. But so is this thing. We've gutted it with the missiles, but uh, oh, dear. Quickly, Kororo, keep restoring those balloons. We do not want to crash into the island, thank you. There we go. Hopefully, the Kororo is going to be able to start deploying its weapons, though it might not need to, honestly. Ooh, one of those things up in the top there. Top right. I have no idea. Perhaps some sort of uh, readouts telling me how the fight is going on, maybe? It looks like this thing is flat out going down, though. And we've recovered a fair chunk of uh, resources from it. And the Kororo is going into this battle. It's starting to deploy its mines. Honestly, at this point, the Kororo is probably the more dangerous one for this. The Sobex take so long to, de to uh, deliver their payload, but the Kororo can just rapid-fire those mines, and they are enormously devastating from up there. That was fantastic. Okay, well, that fight was uh, an easy victory for us. So the Kororo, for a, for a moment there, I was a little bit concerned. A little bit concerned, perhaps, perhaps not necessary, but uh, still, I was. Now, where are your missiles going? They're just kind of randomly wandering. That's always a bit of... A, uh, of a worry when I see that happening. Now, we've got another force coming in. This is an... Ooh, okay. What is it? Deep water guy. Exploration team. Activity pillaging. All right. Well, I would like you guys to redeploy. Uh, you know what? Just be at zero. It's fine. But just face that way. You face that way. Kroro, I would like you involved in this battle. About there. Right, pull all. This is going to be a bit of a battle where we're just trying to gather up some resources. I'm probably going to send the Sobanks out to draw these enemies in towards us as well. Right, let's speed up time. That enemy fleet is moving very slowly. It's going to take them ages to get down to us. Okay, well, uh, while they're doing that, let's have the two Sobanks move forward and actually just claim this territory. In fact, let's get the Kororo over there as well. It'll take the Kororo a little bit more time to get there. Right now, we're at the stage of the game where we just need to start gathering resources more than anything else. Is that still over the right position? Yes, it is. It's gathering resources. It's fine. There we are. Okay, right. We've got a small expeditionary force coming out. Deepwater 21st Mercantile Navy. It's only got a force strength of 7, a force count of 1. This should be a very easy battle. Eric Martin... Go ahead and load in. I will also come down and just watch this fight from over here. Oh, where am I? There I am. Fantastic. All right, there's the enemy just over yonder. Now, if I uh, pull out the binos, I can have a good look down there. Maybe move out to the side a little bit. Right. You going to gauge? Come on, Eric Martin. You know you want to. Ooh, they look like they're both missile ships. That's interesting. Okay, Eric Martin is engaging. And this thing is launching... They've got uh, fuses on them. Those are missiles with fuses. I'm a little bit concerned about that. How close are they getting? They're not even getting remotely close. It's fine. They uh, seem to be some sort of, like, mine-laying sort of uh, missile. They're just launching them up, up high... And they're just deploying their fuses so that if anything gets even remotely close, it'll detonate. But uh, we've done enormous damage to that. Well done there, Eric Martin. That was an easy victory for us. And a bit of uh, resources coming our way, I feel. Okay, let's pull everything back out of play once again and speed up time. Let's uh, get the Sobex into position. In fact, we could kind of move these up here. Let's have one there. One here, the Kororo about there, I think. Now, the reason why the map is going all screwy is because I was in the binoculars. And that really does mess everything up. It's a little bit of a pain, honestly. Um, right, let's try and get into position here. That is a very large fleet. Let's have a look at this. We've got a, a river home. Okay. 
We've got, in fact, let's slow this down just for a second. We've got Monkey Barrel, Sunfish, another Monkey Barrel, Sky Viper, another Sky Viper, uh, Hopperlite. We have, how many of these have we got? Where are they? There we are, Sea Viper, Sea Viper, a couple of Sea Vipers. Got an Ant Lion, Vanguard there, another Vanguard, another Ant Lion, and the River Home. Ooh. I am concerned about this one. I'll be honest with you. But look how much ground the uh, Kororo is uncovering right now. That's actually genuinely wonderful. But I feel that we're going to need all of these forces hard at work for this upcoming fight. Uh, let's get the Kororos a little bit closer together. And. Uh, sorry, the Sobex, I mean to say. And the Kororo needs to get over there before this battle starts. This one not as important. We should be able to take on a strength 8 fleet regardless. And let's just slow that down. Bring both of you guys in. There we are. Can we play you? Play. And you as well. Now we could happily watch this fight just from this this strategic standpoint. And I'm kind of interested in watching that. There's a volley of missiles launching from the two Sobeks. Looks like they're firing a cannon by the look of it. This is an aircraft of some sort. Uh, oh, maybe they're mines. No, actually, they look like the, the shots are basically just falling into the water and just sinking. And there we go. Connection from our first volley, a second one incoming. We can't actually see what kind of damage the Sobek is taking down here, though we can if we zoom right out. It's doing fine at the moment. Let's zoom back in. You can see the health bar just depleting incredibly fast there. Though, that said, it's actually holding its own. Okay, well, let's uh, have a quick look. Where are you? Where is this fight going on? There we go. No, it's going down, bringing in a fair bit of resources, though. I didn't actually check what kind of vehicle it was. Looks like it might be an Atlas. Oops. Need to bring the uh, binos back out. That is a little bit of a frustration, I'll be honest with you. It, I wish it wouldn't be quite so finicky. Is that an Atlas? It is... It doesn't actually say. Maybe if we zoom right in. Yes, it's an Atlas. I thought as much. Right, I would like you back here. I would like you also back there. I don't want to leave this zone, as it may cause um, these guys to just instantly take over the zone. So pull everything back out. Speed time back up again. Hopefully everything should be in position. This is going to be a bit of a big fight. I'm really not sure if our mega force here is going to be enough to take them on, but we'll do our best. Let's split up the Sobex a little bit so it's harder for them to react to the amount of damage that we're going to be inflicting from this position. And here we come. They should be engaged in just a moment. Let's uh, have the Kororo move forward just slightly. So the Kororo is actually one of the first ones to engage. There we go, and have you guys move in as well. And we should get the blockade status just about now. There we go. Right, okay, well this is going to be a bit of a nasty battle. So for this one, we are absolutely going to be bringing them in one at a time. Now, the whole force is down there. We are aboard the Kororo, and it's time for the Kororo to load in. There we go. Now, the, the entire enemy fleet just loaded in. Fair enough. Right, where are they? There are missiles incoming. Right, we need both the Sobek and the Eric Martin in now. There we go. And let's pull out. Also, disconnect this so that... Uh, we oh, that was lucky. Luck, not judgment there. But we've got all of our forces in against all of their forces. We've got... Uh, are these the monkey barrels, perhaps? Ooh, those missiles are going to get in close, actually. We're all, the Kororo's launching its weapons. It's damaged our entire radar satellite is gone. Those scallywags. But uh, apparently the AI is already dead on that, which is fantastic. Oh, it's the whirly gig-like uh, 
vehicles. That's pretty cool. But the Kororo is trying to give as good as it's getting. It's launching its mines. Now, these mines are still going to be an enormous threat to anything down there, as they've got magnets on them. So the, the magnets will pull them towards any vehicle that happens to be close enough. So here's a bunch of mines that are just sitting here. They may never get to see anything, but uh, it looks like the Kororo actually managed to mine a flyer. Well done, Kororo. Very well done indeed. Kororo is taking none of your nonsense, flyers. None of it. Let's see if it can manage to get you. No, unfortunately. Just, just a miss there. Now the Sobex, how are they doing? Everything's a little bit hurt. The Kororo is 89%. It's the most hurt. But the enemy fleet has taken a fair pound in. Uh, are the mines coming down? Are they going to be close enough? No, th this is far too high for these mines to get it. But I think some of the mines just got drawn to this vehicle. Let's actually get in close and see if that's the case or not. Because they've got a 50 meter attraction range. I think they may be getting pulled in. Yes, they are. There we go, the magnets have kicked in. Those mines are chasing this flyer. It's only a matter of time for you now, I'm afraid. They're going to circle you like sharks. Uh, the Kororo is still trying to take that out. Oh, the Kororo is taking enormous damage from one of the uh, gunships. Oh, that's not good. That's really not good. Come on, Sobex. We need some backup for the Kororo. It is taking heavy fire right now. That is not good at all. Thankfully, it is deploying loads of mines still, but it's trying to aim... At a flyer rather than other ships. The Kororo is taking a huge amount of damage here. Eric Martin's already down to 46% as well. That is that is quite bad, in fact. Quite bad. Okay, let's see. Many of the enemy ships have been taken out of this fight. Oh dear, oh dear, did I just get smacked by something in the face? I've got water all over me. I'm not sure what just happened there, but it wasn't good. Come on, Kororo. You can still do this. Launch the mines. More mines. That's good. Those mines are roughly around the area of those ships. They may actually be able to take them out. Oh dear. Oh dear. Those bullets. Not good times. These mines may be able to sink these ships though. Kororo is fantastically powerful with those mines. And it's also very quick to repair. Which is one of its saving graces. Because they shoot off a limb. And as long as I'm piloting it. It's probably going to be back together pretty quickly. These mines are just going to constantly harass these things because they're attacking from underneath. So they're quickly hitting the ammo supplies, and there we go, that one's down. The Kororo is incredibly survivable because of the amount of damage those mines do. But, where is the Eric Martin? The Eric Martin is still here, but I'm not sure where. It's damaged wherever it is. Uh, okay, you've decided to hit something else. I'm not sure why. You're being attacked at close range. This is not good. Why have you decided to attack them? I can't tell, but uh, it's decided that the Kororo needs a little bit of help, and it's knocking that flyer out of the sky. At this point, the Kororo is easily going to be able to take it down. If that's not in the air, then the mines that have already been deployed are going to quickly leap out of the water and just annihilate that thing. So, you have possibly done us a great, great service there. Uh, let's see. Is this the... It's the Sobek. Okay. Well, the Eric Martin is being slowly repaired. I'm not sure where it is, though. Uh, that is a little bit of a concern. Right, let's go up to the map. The Eric Martin is down... Is it sunk? Oh, it may have sunk. Yes, it's at an altitude of minus 24, so it's currently underwater. My lord, this fleet is doing amazingly well for itself, though. Unfortunately, the Kororo is no longer in range to really hit those targets. It's deploying mines still, but uh, they're not really going to be able to do much, I'm afraid. Uh, the Eric Martin was just designating this opponent, so it's still there somewhere. It's still trying, bless it. But here we go. The Sobek is... Whoa, the missiles are missing. Oh, that's quite unfortunate. There's not enough in there for the missiles to hit anymore. That makes this vehicle quite difficult to take out. Oh, there we go. Finally. All right. Now, one of the things that the patch has added is fantastic updates to the, the sound. You may notice 
it sounds so much better now. So much better. But it looks like that may actually be going out of play. Yes, well done, fleet. Very well done. That little tiny ship, now that the uh, Sobek's actually engaging these these ships, they, they really don't stand a chance. There's not a lot they're going to be able to do. Now these little missiles are effectively acting like... Uh, oh, wow, it actually got in the water and then re-engaged its thrusters. That's actually kind of cool, in, a, in an odd way. Come on, just, just that, pretend you're a torpedo. That's right. Little torpedo missiles. Go, go, go. No? Not not your gig? Uh, okay, well, you know, I can't really say too much about that. But the Sobek is going to continue trying to get to the Kororo because I'm on the Kororo. And the Sobek's trying... It, well, actually, no, no. It's uh, because the Sobek is pointing in that direction and its AI is trying to put a little bit of distance between it and its opponent. So it was just going to keep on running. So uh, it was only a matter of time. If it had drawn out too long, then eventually that little ship would have been brought within range of the Kororo's mine layers. Well, that was a uh, that was a convincing victory. I feel a convincing victory. Now, of course, the uh, Eric Martin, little worse for wear there. I I appreciate that. Uh, what should we do? Should we retreat or should we bring them closer together? Uh, I'm not sure really. I think we're going to have them start making their way over into this position. Uh, the Eric Martin, though, is actually really badly damaged. 57%. The Sobek's already repaired itself. And the Kororo, because I'm on it, has already repaired itself. Okay, right. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to pull all. I want the Kororo over here. I also want the Sobek over here. I'll do. The Eric Martin can come over here as well. Now, we've got another force. What kind of strength is that? Another strength 40. Ooh, that's not good. That's really not good. Okay, right. We're going to try and uh, engage them here. So, the Sobek there. Eric Martin there. Kororo, let's have you in the middle. And as this time passes, I'm going to allow them to move. As soon as the Eric Martin is in position. In fact, no, they're approaching way too fast. Right, I'm going to spawn the Eric Martin in. There we go, and I'm also going to warp to it. This way, our ability to heal will be combined. Oh, let's try and get... Where is the... Oh, my lord, the bridge is completely gone. Okay, right, well, we'll uh, do our best. Now, there's the Sobek over there. The enemy fleet will be approaching... Oh, dear. From... There. Okay, this is potentially a frightening situation. I like the little sound effects of the repair um, tentacles now. But it looks like we've finished repairing the Eric Martin. Oh, fantastic. Okay, then. Let's pull everything out. And let's travel over to the Kororo. Back to the map. All right. Let's get you in position. And Kororo, we want you there. Okay, what kind of fleet have we got here? We've got a Drake, a Drake, a Drake, another Drake. Oh, dear. Well, the original Eric Martin managed to take on four Drakes out of five. The last one followed us back to our base and then got destroyed by the Eric Martin in it. Uh, sorry, the, the Sobek in its unfinished state. So I'm actually not too concerned about this battle. It may... Prove my undoing, but we'll see. Okay, this is going to be the last fight of this episode, though. So, Kororo, load in. Also, Sobek, Eric Martin, everyone load in. All right, let's see how this goes. Now, I don't think the Kororo is going to necessarily be the best uh, combatant in this one because it's not really going to be able to deliver its mines too well. Though, of course, uh, the problem is the Sobek's right underneath it. Those mines will be able to uh, target the Sobek. Oh, wow, okay. I don't think it's actually going to need it. The difference between one Sobek and two Sobeks is the entire wing of Drake's has been annihilated. Uh, the Kororo is d d deploying its mines anyway. That's possibly going to be terrible, because they're landing really close to the Sobek. I'm probably going to do more damage to my own fleet than the enemy. Oh, dear. That's not good. 
Kuroro, stop firing. Kuroro, oh dear. Kuroro, please stop trying to help. Kuroro, you're not helping. Ah, oh, Kuroro, why? Why? Blue on blue, Kuroro. Quickly, kill these things before the Kuroro destroys you all. Uh, okay, I think the Kuroro's mines are actually being attracted to this. The Kuroro is managing to deploy the mines directly on this stuff, but uh, you guys, Kuroro. You're a dangerous fellow to be underneath. But there we go. It looks like, uh, thankfully, we managed to down a drake on top of the area where the mines are. But those ones are still going to hunt the Sobek. There are a couple in the water here. Sobek, flee if I were you. In fact, I'm going to cheat. And uh, Sobek, there you go. Ha-ha! Take that, mines. Okay, that was a little bit close for comfort. But uh, well done. Another fo strength 40 fleet just put down. That was significantly easier than I was expecting. We've got a deep guard fourth army over there. But it seems that uh, two Sobeks and the Kororo are more than enough to take on the deep water guard here. I'm strongly thinking of getting these guys over this uh, resource gathering zone. And there's a little part of me, I'll be honest, that's wondering if maybe the, the, the Kororo wouldn't make a natural... Mining outpost. Oh, no, it can't. It would need a engine. Hmm, this little area under here, perhaps? All we would need is engine power enough to run the miners. We could just deploy it over an area. I mean, we don't need oil. We've got so many barrels of the stuff from one proper oil-gathering outpost. We just don't need that. We could build a little engine over the Kororo. And actually, on the two limbs that don't have the mine deployers, just build... Um, resource miners. That is definitely an option. That is definitely an option. I'm liking it. Perhaps the Kororo has found uh, a new calling. A radar station and <laughs> miner from very, very, very high up. I'm not sure how that'll work, but we'll have to see. But that's going to be it for this episode. I do hope you enjoyed all of the battling. I certainly did. And I hope you're going to be joining me in the next. But until then, and as always, do take care.